called genetics, but um, what I hope uh, it will be is about genetics and beyond genetics. Um, and that will become, I think, clear as we go through the, the talks and into the panel discussion. But genetics uh, alone would probably be sufficient. As I mentioned um, uh, in my introduction, <clears throat> I think that none of us, when UK Biobank got started, uh, imagined that we would be looking at uh, genotyping data on all half million people by 2016. Um, and yet we are. Um, and um, the, the, the people who have been really fundamental to um, ensuring that the genetic data that we will have uh, will be high quality is not only the, the company, Affymetrics, that did the genotyping, but particularly the group at the Wellcome Trust Centre for Human Genetics in, in Oxford, who are going to kick off um, by uh, talking about... Um, uh, the, the genotyping and the, the QC, uh, and also the imputation. Um, Colin Freeman has been uh, very heavily involved in the, the, the QC work, um, but uh, Claire Bycroft and then Jonathan Marquini are going to talk about uh, the genotyping and imputation. So over to you. Great, thank you very much. Um, so Jonathan and I uh, have the formidable but also exciting task of introducing to you all the genetic data that's been collected on now the 500,000 um, UK Biobank participants. So to start off with some basics, the human genome is around 3 billion uh, bases long. Um, we all inherit uh, one copy from our father and one copy from our mother. Now there are some positions um, on, the, on the genome that the base can actually vary within an individual but also across individuals. And these are known as single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs. And in all of the UK Biobank, or almost all of the UK Biobank participants, we measure genotypes. That is the pair of alleles that they carry at 800,000 uh, of these SNPs along the genome. Now these SNPs, um, there are many of them, there are more than 800,000 on the genome, um, but we have uh, selected, a panel of experts have selected a set of SNPs that are relevant uh, for capturing a variation that's likely to be important for uh, health and disease. But we also capture uh, SNPs that are useful and important for being able to infer other parts, uh, other parts of variation in the genome that we don't measure directly, and that's what Jonathan's going to talk about. So uh, Colin Freeman and I have been involved in making sure that the genetic data that you guys get to use um, is of high quality. Our general strategy was to make sure that we uh, identified uh, SNPs and samples, that we had lots of evidence that there was um, something wrong with them, um, and I can re reassure you that this is a small portion of the data. And our, our other aim was to provide enough information uh, to researchers so that they could apply uh, QC that was relevant to their particular uh, research question. Um, and, in, and part of that is to provide uh, genetic uh, information about properties of the samples, um, that is the individuals um, on whom we have genetic data that are useful in general uh, for the research community, and that's what I'm going to focus on um, today. One of the quite exciting things um, and striking things about uh, the UK Biobank cohort is its genetic diversity. On the right-hand side, um, I show here the uh, numbers and proportions uh, of individuals and how they self-report uh, their genetic um, or their, their ethnic uh, background. And as you can see, many people self-report as being British, um, but many, uh, in fact, all of the continents are represented in this data set. And on the left, I'm showing you what the genetic data, that is the genotypes, tell us about uh, genetic ancestry. So on this plot, each individual um, is positioned uh, according to a continuous measure of uh, genetic ancestry by just using their genotypes and they're coloured according to their self-reported ethnicity. And you can see that on the right-hand side, individuals uh, who carry alleles, they have genotypes that are at higher frequencies in Africa, uh, appear on the right-hand side of the plot, and those who have more uh, European-like ancestry appear on the left-hand side. And as you can see, there are many, many individuals uh, who are of mixed ancestry, um, and this is why we provide a continuous uh, measure of genetic ancestry, as it tends to be uh, more precise than the self-reported um, ethnic background. And this is really interesting in itself, uh, but actually really important um, to understand and be aware of when using the, uh, genetic data. And we've had to adjust um, some of the standard uh, quality control metrics um, in order to account for this. And we provide a multi-dimensional and continuous measure of uh, genetic ancestry for researchers to be able to properly adjust for uh, ancestry in uh, something like a genome-wide association study. 
Another thing to be aware of, and which is interesting, uh, in the UK biobank data is familial relatedness. Um, in, uh, as in the uh, assessment centres, uh, this information is not collected. In fact, many participants wouldn't even be aware that they had relatives uh, in the sample. And we expect to see quite a few of these. And in order to infer relatedness, we have to compare uh, every single pair of individuals. And as you can imagine, that is a large number. So we have done this on behalf of the research community. And we report uh, a measure of genetic similarity uh, called the kinship coefficient for any pair of individuals who are um, cousins or closer. And just to give you a sense of the numbers, uh, around 150,000 individuals uh, have at least one relative uh, in the data set. But many individuals have more than one relative. And on the left, I'm showing you just some examples of the kinds of family groups that we see in the data. The colours uh, match the kinds of uh, related, level of relatedness. Finally, before I pass over to Jonathan, um, one of the main reasons that all of this genetic data has been collected is so that we can better understand the, the link between genotype and phenotype. And height is a really good example uh, for us to conduct a genome-wide association study for the purposes of uh, making sure that our QC has done, done what, what we expect it to do. What I'm showing here is a Manhattan plot. If you know what this is, great. Um, but if you don't, I'll explain. So the red dots um, are SNPs, parts of the genome um, that have been reported in the past. This is not UK Biobank data. Have been reported to be associated with height. That is, uh, that individuals who carry a certain allele at these SNPs are, on average, slightly taller than people who carry a different allele. So, and the, the height um, of the, uh, the point indicates the, the level of statistical significance um, of the association. And the red line, uh, anything above the red line, is exciting and uh, shows clear evidence of association. So this is what the genetic data looks like, or the association test looks like, uh, if we use 10,000 UK biobank individuals. As you can see, uh, we don't have power to detect even known associations at this level. With 150,000 individuals, so this is the number of individuals that were released in the, the first tranche, tranche of the uh, genetic data, you can see that reassuringly uh, we see the same signals uh, that have been reported in the past, but you also see, you can see there's two or three um, novel associations there. You're the first audience to ever see this plot, um, so hopefully you're as excited as I am about this. Uh, this is 350,000 UK Biobank individuals, the same association test on height. And as you can see, again, we're replicating uh, known associations, um, but we're also seeing uh, a number of novel associations. And this wouldn't be possible without this data being of high quality, but also being a single cohort um, and as many as, um, uh, individuals as there are. So with that, I'm going to hang over to Jonathan, who's going to talk about how to make this data even bigger. Okay, thank you, Claire. Um, so my role in the project has been to work on ways of enhancing the UK biobank genetic, genetic data set. So um, as Claire said, we've collected 800, approximately 800,000 um, positions of the genome, data at 800,000 positions of the genome. But the genome is much larger than that. The genome has 3.2 billion positions. Now, many of those don't vary at all between us, but many millions could be relevant to the human diseases that we're interested in studying. So the question really is, can we improve upon the 800,000 positions? Can we, what can we say about these other many millions of positions that exist? So here's a representation of the data that we have. Each row here is an individual. And so we have the two um, alleles, the two types, one from your mother, one from your father. And here I've got six positions, but you've got to imagine that this goes on almost forever, 800,000 long. And then we've got one row for each individual. Here I've got four individuals, but we're going to have, in reality, almost 500,000 individuals. So we've got this huge, huge data set. So the first thing that we do is we apply a statistical method to try to infer the combination of these different types that come from your mother and your father. So essentially, we're trying to allocate one set of types to the mother and one set of types 
one set of types to the father. And that's a very difficult statistical problem. If you take this position here, you can see that this individual has a T and a C, but there's two possibilities for that heterozygote genotype. It can be that way around or that way around. And of course, there are lots of these positions all across the genome. So for each of these um, heterozygote genotypes, I have to make a decision which way round it, which way round it, it is. Did it come from the mother or did it come from the father? So I've got this lots and lots of binary decisions. And in fact, there are more possible solutions to this problem than there are atoms in the universe. In fact, many, many more times. So it's quite a hard statistical problem. We've been working on this for many years. And we've got it to the point, using the UK Biobank data set, essentially because it's so large, that we can estimate um, these, the, these um, haplotypes almost perfectly across whole chromosomes. So once we have done that step, we've aligned all of these alleles according to whether they're paternally or maternally inherit, uh, um, inherited. And then we combine the data set with other larger um, data sets, such as that from the Haplotype Reference Consortium in the UK 10K project. And when I mean larger, I don't mean in terms of numbers individ individuals, I mean in terms of numbers of the posi SNP positions in the data database. So you can see this data set is much denser in terms of the positions that are measured. And so once we have this reference data set and the UK Biobank data set, we look for matches in the sequence. We look for regions of the genome which match between the UK Biobank individuals and the reference individuals. And once we find a match, we can then copy down the alleles in that reference database and fill in all of the gaps. Okay? This is known as imputation. We do this on all individuals across the whole genome. Essentially, then we end up with a data set like this, where we found lots of matches between the UK Biobank individuals, the individuals in the reference database, and we get a much denser and richer resource for all of the researchers who want to link genetics to all of the, the phenotypic and environmental information. We can do that very accurately, and we've got the speed of this down to around 10 minutes per sample. So that's negligible when you compare it to the amount of time it takes to, say, for example, image somebody. And essentially, it's for free. You get that essentially you know, with no real extra cost. And so in summary, we start off with the data, the data set which has 800,000 positions in the genome, and we can increase that 100-fold to around 800 million. And so the final release of the genetic data will have around 80 million variants in it. Um, so some, some of you will be interested in the timelines for this. So as, as you'll know, um, in May last year, we released... Um, um, the genetic data on 150,000 individuals, QC genotypes and QC information and imputed genotypes will be available. And we're working right now on the final release um, scheduled for the first, fourth quarter of this year, which will be all of the individuals, again, with the um, QC genotypes, QC information, imputed genotypes, and the raw un-QC'd um, genotypes. So there's lots of people to thank here. This has been a big collaboration between Peter Donnelly's group and lots of people in the Wellcome Trust Centre in Oxford, my um, own group in the Department of Statistics in Oxford, Affymetrics and uh, UK Biobank, and of course a large group of people who worked on the array design. <laughs>